Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and to a new background and surrounding. Don't mind the blurred background. I'm actually in a room that's a complete disaster and um, I didn't want to distract you. I want you to look at my face. <laughs> anyway, so today is a what sold video and I'm kind of excited to do this. I don't do these often and this is a what sold for August. Um, as you can see in the thumbnail, I made well over $4,000 gross, of course. <laughs> that is not my net profit. Um, I'll pull up my net profit for you right now. So my net profit was $4,041, as you can see right there on the screen, after cost of goods, gas, mileage, all that kind of stuff. So really great month. Um, it's kind of like my average um, every month or so, give or take maybe five, $600, but um, that's kind of where I'm at. So that's exciting. Uh, it was a really great month and I don't necessarily want to show you all of my August sales. What I did was I picked my top 20 sales of August and I'm going to share my screen and show you them and kind of go through them and explain why I picked it up. Um, is it a style that you should be on the lookout for? Is this something that is a bolo that people don't really know about? I, I like to give more context to my sales and, if, and for me to sit here and go through all my August sales, this would be a three hour video. So I figured it would just be easier to share my screen and kind of go through the top 20. Um, some are by dollar amount and some is just brand itself and what I think people should be looking for um, when they're outsourcing. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And here we are, let me see if I can move myself over. A little bit hopefully it's moved over on your screen sometimes with zoom and i'm screen sharing that looks a little funky but here we go all right so this, these are just this is just my sales page so clearly these are the ones that are pending right now and here we go all right so let's start with um this sale right here so i'm going to click on this guy these are revice super 80s paradise city straight leg jeans i've talked about this brand before um revice is um i guess catered towards a younger crowd but they do really well um i came across a bunch of new tag revice jeans a few months ago um, whenever i see them i do pick them up especially if they are a straight leg so these are definitely in style they're trendy they're 80s um i'd even say 90s at this point they're high rise love everything about them they were new at tag a size 32 um sold for 60 dollars, which was um a was a offer sent out to a liker with discounted shipping. So that was really exciting. This is what the tag looks like right there. So you guys can see, um, I kind of like this whole sharing screen thing because I can show you the photos that I took and you can see the label and all that fun stuff. So hopefully you find this helpful. Um, so yeah, revise, definitely add it to your list of denim jeans to be looking out for. Next, we have these Madewell stovepipe jeans in Manchester wash. I'm going to tell you right now, the Madewell stovepipe is a bolo. If you don't like picking up Madewell and you want to pick up a Madewell pair of jeans, the stovepipe is one of them. Um, the stovepipe always sells really well for me. It sells quickly. Um, they have, I think, two washes. This is the one that I've, I typically find. I found a couple new at tag. This was um, a new at tag piece as well. This was sent out to an offer. So it was, um, had a discounted shipping on it, sold for $60. The stovepipe generally always sells um, for $55 to $70 for me. So really great pickup, stovepipe jean made well. Add that denim brand to your list as well. All right, next we have the Seychelles, 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 I don't know how you say this. Um, Exit Strategy Black Leather Ankle Boots. This is a brand that I generally bypass. I don't pick up. It doesn't excite me. I just, it doesn't generally sell well for me. So I don't really grab it. Well, there's always exceptions to the rules. And these boots were definitely the exception. As you can tell, they are beautiful. They were basically brand new. They have a nice little pebbled leather. I don't know why this is not clicking. I can't do anything. Um, it's not loading. But uh, they sold for $80, which was full asking price. Thrilled with that. So thrilled with that. Um, 
I, when I saw these, there were a couple things went through my brain. The first one was, okay, it's a nice chunky black heel, super trendy right now, check one box. It's an ankle booty, going into fall, checks another box. Um, pointed toe, not necessarily still a trendy thing. This is more almond shape, not really pointed, um, but still classy enough for a fall boot. We're gonna grab it, okay? This cost me $15, which was, I, I paid up for these. So I wasn't positive I was gonna get a return on them. I definitely paid up for them. And it ended up working out really well for me. Um, and I think that's kind of like the moral of the story with all of this is you really need to check and see um, each individual piece, what it sells for or what, what it looks like out there. Does it have a lot of things that just check a lot of boxes for the season that we're going into, for things that are trending that people are looking for? So definitely look into all that stuff. Um, when you're picking up pieces. So this is a brand, again, like I said, never pick up and ended up working out really well for me. So I was happy with that. All right, next, you guys are gonna think I'm nuts when I say this, but Michael Kors leather tote bags will sell if you do your research. So this is a Michael Kors Moxley medium shoulder tote. Um, this bag retailed, this was the actual retail price, $5.98. So it was super expensive. So for 165, I had it listed, I think at 225, I took an offer. I paid um, $8 for the bag. So <laughs> I made quite a profit on it. Um, the leather was super buttery soft. Um, I liked the hardware on it. I think there's something to be said with certain pieces. Like if they are a classic tote, if they have the right hardware, if they, um, as you can see, even right here, there's like a little mark on it. It's also 165. If it is something that is just really trendy or um, I hate using that word trendy, but it's true. Something that people are looking for in other brands, let's say it that way. Um, and it's in a brand that they know. So maybe there's a similar style out there by a designer that looks like this, that someone's really searching for, but they don't want to pay the price point of that designer brand. And they know Michael Kors. They like Michael Kors. It's a mall brand that most people are familiar with. They're probably going to spend the hundred or $200 on it, know the quality and the make of the piece and forego that luxury piece that they really want if it gives them the same aesthetic. So this particular style of Michael Kors, if you find it does um, go for a higher dollar amount for whatever reason, maybe it's the leather quality, which felt amazing. It was like such a soft, soft leather um, or maybe a celebrity wore it. I didn't really do too, too much digging in it. But when I did look up this specific style, um, I did see the solds. They were significant anywhere in the 100 to 300 or $400 range. So it definitely commands that dollar amount. Um, I've talked about this about, um, there's like a course weekender type bag that I have found once that also commanded a high dollar amount. So just because you see Michael Kors, um, don't assume that people won't pay a certain amount of money for it because this is proof right here. And I've shown other examples in the past that people will pay up for certain brands, depending on the style and what it's made of. So Long story short, this Michael Kors bag sold for a really great profit. <laughs> Next up is this Levi's loose sleeve trucker denim jacket. This is retail arbitrage. I have found, I think six of these or seven of these so far. All of them are sold, but two. Um, I actually picked up another one yesterday because I found one. So excited about that. Sorry if like I'm like the background's really dark and stuff. It's really gloomy out. So I, I'm doing the best I can. I don't have lighting or anything in here. Um, anyway, digress. Um, this loose sleeve trucker denim jacket was a $20 investment. It sold for $68. Um, that is what I priced it at. There was no discounted shipping on this guy. Um, new tags. It was crop styles. You can see on the uh, model here, darker denim, 100% cotton. That's just what the tag looks like. So retailed for 98. Um, just the loose sleeve is just something that people are really looking for. Anything that you put in your title says trucker, trucker sleeve, 
trucker denim. I mean, it's that's just a, a word that you should be putting in for SEO purposes and um, for searchability. People are searching for that word right now, especially going into fall. So this is definitely um, SEO based. I'm sure someone came in and from Google and saw this and picked it up. So yeah, that's that's that one. That's retail arbitrage. So if you come across something that's similar though in the thrift store, definitely pick it up. Definitely, definitely. Okay, here we go. We have another one. We have Coach Olive Leather Loafer in Brown. Um, this was a consignment store pickup. I paid $12 for this. They were new without tag. Um, let's see there. These are like a penny loafer style. Um, shoe sorry lost my words for a second pebbled leather really great condition slip on style um here's another thing with coach i've said this in the past and i will repeat myself again um certain coach shoes especially if they're leather or a clog or a boot of some sort uh, snow boot rain boot generally gonna sell for a good amount of money was i surprised it sold for 60 dollars yeah a little bit but um i, I happy with it i was thinking more on the 40 50 dollar range so for me to get 60 i mean that's that's pretty great i can't say this is going to happen with every coat shoe that you're going to pick up but when it is a shoe that is similar to this or it is a um snow boot rain boot or leather boot like knee boot knee high boot or something you're probably going to get close to this dollar amount so this was a happy little sale for me all right got another maywell piece this is a Madewell, the flap convertible crossbody bag. It was in the snake embossed print. Um, I also got this at a consignment store. I paid $12 for it. This thing sold within 24 hours time. It was in really good condition. It was like hardly ever worn. Um, beautiful bag, retailed for 150. So I think I priced it at 85. Um, 85 or 90, I don't know, but this was an offer that came in at 76. So as you can tell, I priced really high to account for any offers that will come in or discounted shipping or anything like that. Um, the buyer bought it at $76, which was great. Um, great going into the fall season, anything that's snake embossed, animal print, anything like that definitely is going to sell right now. Um, and I, Madewell bags in general just have a really great resale value and people are always looking for them. So if you come across a Madewell bag, you definitely want to pick that up. Generally, you'll see up here at the top, other bags are listed. More of these like transport bags are what Madewell is known for, but I wouldn't skip on a snake print either or any animal print for that matter. All right, this was a new to me brand. I had heard of it in passing, like in videos and stuff that I watched, but I'd never come across it before. And it's called Marine Layer. Um, this was retail arbitrage as well. It is the Corbet, Corbett, Corbet, let me say it's Corbet, quilted bomber jacket. Um, I loved it because I love quilted jackets. So that was like an immediate, I should look this up. I'm gonna pick it up thing. I paid $9 for this piece. Um, and it sold for 80, which was full asking price. So I was so happy with that. This is the second um, quilted bomber jacket that I bought from Marine Layer that sold for full asking price. So this is to me a bolo and maybe I'm new to this bolo, but this is definitely something to be on the lookout for. Um, if you guys have picked this brand up before, leave me your thoughts on it down below. Like, is this just a one-off thing or does it always generally sell for this dollar amount? I'm, I'm curious because now that I've sold it and I've picked it up, now it's like ingrained in my brain to look for it. So I wanted to share this with you guys too, because I, I personally had never come across it or heard of it until this retail arbitrage trip, which then led me to picking it up and then selling two pieces for $80, which is great. All right, here is another shoe. This is L'Artiste Spring Step Blueberry Leather Booty. This brand L'Artiste, they just, they do very well. Oh, oh, that's... Not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to my sale. <laughs> um, this boot or shoe, I should say, um, this boot in particular does well, but the 
shoe brand itself does have a following. They are on the comfort shoe realm. Um, you'll find them in certain stores that cater to comfort shoes or shoes for people that um, need additional support in their insoles and whatnot. Um, they have like really funky but trendy styles. Like I just, I, I always gravitate towards them. I think they're fun. They have like floral patterns on them or they have like stitched florals or always some type of stitched um item on their shoes you'll see here like it has these really pretty buttons right here on the screen i'm pointing to my screen they can see me pointing let me use my mouse instead right here <laughs> um and then you see the color palette is really pretty it's very fall i was happy that these sold for 70 dollars. i wasn't sure how they were going to do but as you can see they were cute they were a cute little shoe so that was a happy little sale. So that's another brand to be on the lookout for, in my opinion, of course. Next, I talked about this on my Instagram post. This is a Banana Republic Long and Lean pink plaid blazer. It was in a size 20, so it was plus size. Um, this blazer retails generally for $240. That's what I saw in my research. Um, as you can see, this is the regular Banana Republic Long and Lean Blazer. This was not the outlet. If it was the outlet, it would have three dots right down uh, under Banana Republic. So I was surprised at the sale. This sold full asking price at $125. I bought this retail arbitrage. I originally was going to keep it for myself, but when I put it on, um, it was too big for me up top um, and just looked awkward because I'm not a size 20, but because it was a long and lean blazer, I had to size up considerably um, for it to fit. And I just didn't like the way it looked on me. So I said, all right, I'm going to list it. I know I paid $16 for it, but even if I double my money, like I'll be happy. Well, when I did some research on it, I noticed that these long and lean banana public blazers retail for quite a bit and resale for quite a bit. So I took a shot in the dark and I listed it at 125. Um, there were solds between 30 and 150. And I was like, you know what, whatever, we're going to price high. If someone offers me 50, I'm going to take it. Or if someone offers me 40, I'm going to take it. Um, so I decided to list it at 125. It sat for like a couple of weeks and then it sold for full asking price, which was wild to me. I just, I mean, as you can see up here, and like, these are the general prices, 40, 30, 55, 79, 20, 50, like that's a banana Republic price. So I don't know if it had to do with this specific style, the long and lean blazer. And if that has something to do with it, which I think it does. Um, yes, it was new at tax, which definitely makes a difference as well. And I think the size definitely helped. Um, but yeah, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. And if I were to find this again on a retail trip, I probably would pick it up and I doubt I'd sell it for this price again, but maybe I would, who knows, maybe something I have to try, but yeah, this is definitely something that I think is important for all of us to remember just because it's a mall brand, just because it's Banana Republic, just because it's Chico's, just because it's J. Jill, just because it's J. Crew doesn't mean that it doesn't hold a certain amount of value to someone out there. Um, it's all dependent on the piece. Like that is the most important thing to remember. You really need to look at each individual piece that you pick up as its own entity and do your research that way. The more experienced you get in reselling, the more time you spend doing this, the easier it will become for you. If you're newer at reselling, it, it can get really difficult. And that's just the truth. I mean, it's hard to do this, um, but with time, it gets a little easier. And sometimes you'll pick something up and you'll realize like, okay, these, these hit a lot of the boxes of things that I, that I see that are working for other people out there from these videos that I watch, maybe I should test it out. So, you know, take it uh, one step at a time, like focus on one thing at a time. I'm just sharing my journey with you guys and things that are working for me and what I'm finding. I'm learning new things every single day, every day brands like this, for example, I would not generally pick this up, but something that didn't fit me correctly ended up being a really great sale. So you live and you learn. All right. This, this piece, this is just wild to me. I never, ever sell rag and bone on my own anymore, unless it's like leather pants, leather jacket, like something like that. This piece had no leather on it. <laughs> it was just a really pretty twill 
tweed shift dress. That's it. And I thought, all right, we're going into fall. Like, let's, let's, let's grab it. Let's just try to sell it ourselves. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to send it to the real, real, and I'll re and I'll make, I'll double or triple my money. Well, lo and behold, I list it and, um, it, this sold on an offer. I want to say I listed at 135, sold at 123 with discounted shipping. I was so surprised by this sale. I mean, it's a very pretty piece. I liked it. I would wear it. Like it's a very nice business casual, but could also dress it up. Um, and this is an older rag and bone tag. So I was pleasantly surprised it's over $123. Just supposed to show you that some people um, are willing to pay that price. I think the stock photo definitely helped because of the way the model is wearing it with the tie up um, knee high boots, which is so big right now going into fall. I think the tweed, um, people going back into the office, all these different factors probably helped. Um, and I also have noticed an uptick in dresses selling this year. So there's some of that as well. Didn't mean to scroll down there. So yeah, this rag and bone sale, would I say pick up every rag and bone piece that you come across? No, I think you need to do a little research on it. Um, but this for me was something worth taking the risk on. It was an $8 investment um, and it ended up working out really well for me. There have been times I picked up rag and bone and it has not worked out well for me. And I've sent it into the real rail and I've only doubled my money, meaning I've only made $16 on it. Um, so things you need to realize and think about, but this was great. This was awesome. Moving on to this Zara pleated floral print midi prairie boho dress. In case you can't tell, I stuck in every single keyword that I could think of for SEO purposes. And it worked because this sold for full asking price of $65. This was not a blogger favorite, but it was a piece that retailed for a bit more. It was not new with tags, but it was in excellent condition. Um, it is just a piece that you're seeing on the runway. You see it paired with the boots. So that was also great. That's why I used the stock photo as well. Kind of showing how you can pair this in the fall with the chunky um, lace up boot kind of combat style. And then you've got this prairie boho floral, a little bit of puff sleeve dress um, with it. So it was really pretty. I, I loved it. I loved this dress. It was so pretty. And I was surprised that it sat for as long as it did. It had a little bit of a, it has tears right here. I don't know if you can tell. Um, the, so Becky Park actually bought one of these Zara pleated dresses from me that I found at the thrift store. I instantly thought of her and I was like, okay, I need to like show Becky this dress. So she actually purchased one. Um, another one went to another viewer. It was another floral dress. I have one more floral dress left from this trip from the thrift store. Um, and then this was, this is the highest one, the highest sale, $65. And I just think the keywords definitely helped the way the model is wearing the dress with the accessories. I think a lot of that played into it, but um, for those who don't know, there are some Zara pieces that are blogger favorites. And let me see. Okay. So I don't have a picture of the um, style number here, but generally on this tag that you see on the screen, there are um, numbers on the bottom and maybe I'll do a video on this on how to look up for blogger favorites and stuff. But if you type in those numbers, that's how you find Zara pieces. And you'll be, once you type in the number, you'll see if it's a blogger favorite or not because bloggers will put that style number in their blogs. Um, but this piece, wasn't any of that. It was just, it was just, here we go and use the word again, trendy. It is something that, that a lot of people are looking for and keywords. I can't stress that enough. Your keywords matter in your title. Your keywords matter in your description. Puffy shoulder, ruffle trim, tied fastening the back, long sleeve, round neck, like all of these things, descriptors of the piece, they really matter, especially if you want buyers coming in from Google, like that's how your item is going to be seen. So as you can see, I tagged Becky Park down here <laughs> because Becky and I were having conversations about these dresses. Anyway, yeah, so this is a really great piece. I should probably pull all of my Zara sales that I've had thus far this year and go through them and explain to you how to kind of master Zara. And that's something that I took on the end of last year, beginning of this year was 
really learning about Zara and realizing the value that Zara can have on these reselling platforms. That has been a fun adventure for me. I actually thoroughly enjoy finding Zara and flipping them, flipping the pieces. All right, this brand is fun. This is, okay, I don't know how you say this. I don't know if it's Arche, Arch, I don't know. It's definitely French. I could tell you that much. So I'm gonna say it's Arche, I'm making it up. But this right here is a brand that you need to add to your list. They are a comfort shoe. They are very sought after. They're known for like their wedge shoe that they have. Um, this is the Lily Newbuck perforated leather ballet flat. I loved the color. The color is what sold me on it. I love the little perforated detail on it. It was suede. It was comfy. I almost kept them for myself because they fit. And then I'm going to sound like Bailey Sarian right now. I said, nay, nay, Daniela, you do not need that. I need to like not mimic Bailey Sarian, but I really do say nay, nay. So Bailey and I are like besties when it comes to that. Anyway, um, yeah, this is a brand that I totally lost track of what I was saying because I thought of Bailey Sarian. Um, this is a brand that you guys should add to your list. They have all different types of shoes. Like I said, you'll find a lot of like their wedge shoe. It's a comfort shoe. This was a newer style. I'd never seen this style before. You'll see up here, other people posting different types of shoes, Oxfords, um, move myself here, Oxfords, flats, another perforated, oh, a lot of this like elastic back flat. So yeah, this is the type of shoe that they just always sell. So anyway, these retail for quite a bit. As you can see, the people have them priced accordingly. I had this priced at $80 and it sold for full asking price. So that was exciting. Um, but yeah, this brand added to your list. It's very, very good. All right, this was a retail arbitrage pickup and I don't generally pick up Adidas. I don't generally pick up Nike. I just, it's just not what I pick up, but these were fun and these were funky. And I thought to myself, someone is gonna want these because they totally remind me of skater pants from like the early 2000s. And I just think they're fun. I like them. I like, I just like the look of them. They're cargo pants, I like the color. We're gonna get them. They cost me $10 retail arbitrage and they sold for 65 so these are the adidas original cargo pocket track pant in rust color rust is like name of the game for me um so these were them as you can see super wide leg um they had this patchwork right here where it said adidas retailed for a hundred and um yeah sold for 65 i mean I, am i one to pick up adidas no Am I one to really like dive into athletic wear in this fashion to like understand what styles of Adidas and Nike and Columbia and all these different um, New Balance, right? Like all these different brands. Not really. I kind of stick to what I know. I know Lululemon. I know Girlfriend Collective. I know um, a few other ones out there. Um, Aloe, you know, like I know those. But every once in a while, something will catch my eye from a brand that I don't generally pick up. And this was something of that sort. And it worked out in my favor. This actually sold in a week, which I was surprised. I thought this was either going to sit for a long time or it was going to sell really fast and ended up selling really quickly. And I think being new at tags and back to school definitely helped with that. All right, this is one of my favorite sales of the month. This is a Diane von Furstenberg rosy silk wrap dress. This had leather detailing all over the dress. Um, it's not letting me click anywhere, but on the cuff of the sleeve, on the pockets, as you can see in the picture, on the um, ribbing of the side of the dress, the collar was um, leather. It was a wrap style dress. So DVF is famous for their wrap style dresses. This is one of them. This was new with tags. I paid $20 for this dress, which was a heavy investment for me on Diane von Furstenberg because most of the time it ends up at the real rail. But this piece I was determined to sell on my own. And my thought process was, well, I paid 20. And if I sell it for 40 or 50, I'll be happy because I didn't know I was taking a gamble. It's kind of the name of the game. Um, took the gamble, paid it out. It worked wonderfully, $175. 
We love that. Is this gonna happen every time with the Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress? Absolutely not. This was silk, this had leather, it was new at tags. It definitely had three key components to help itself at this price point. Do I think every wrap dress is gonna sell for this amount? No, I think most of the wrap dresses are gonna sell for 40 to 60 in that range, sometimes even lower. All right, here we go. We have some AGL. Um, leather navy ballet flats. I also put this in Instagram story when they sold. I was so surprised they sold um, for $68, which was an offer with discounted shipping. I believe it was 15% off with the discounted shipping. Um, yeah, this brand uh, retails for so much money, but man, the resale on it isn't always great. It, like it has to be a loyal AGL customer who's coming in to buy them. Um, this specific style that you see on the screen is kind of like their classic flat that um, most people know of. Uh, this is their older label right here. Um, I've sold newer AGL shoes, but this is their older. If you see this one, you see on the screen, it's definitely like, I want to say five plus years old. Um, the new one is more streamlined, bigger font, just as AGL in white. Um, but these are just a navy flat. And yeah, I um, I got them $5. <laughs> so I would be happy if I sold them for 40, which I have before. But um, these were in really great condition. So selling them for 68 was great. Would I tell you to pick this up every time you see it? No, I think you should be aware of the brand. I think you should be aware of the different styles that they make because um, their newer styles are really nice and they've sold some of the newer styles and they have sold for a hundred plus dollars. So it definitely can command a higher dollar amount, but it just depends on the style. So this is their classic flat style. I wouldn't pick it up all the time, but the price was right for $5, which is why I grabbed it. Um, I don't know if the real real takes these. I want to say they do. I feel like I've sent in a pair and they accepted them, but I don't know if they, if it's on their list. Um, but Something to definitely research to see if they take it or not. I'm not quite sure on that. Next up, so we only have three more sales after this. These are the Levi's Dad Jean Straight Leg in Joe Stones. That's the name of it. Dad Jeans always sell. These are newer tags. These are from a retail arbitrage uh, trip. They sold for full asking price at $85. Um, here is the tag. And this is what they look like. So they're your classic dad jeans. You can see here on the model, dad jeans are in. If you find dad jeans, pick them up, list them. People want them. They want mom jeans. They want dad jeans. They want tapered leg. They want straight. They want wide. They want flare. That's what people want. Not that people don't want skinny because I still like a good skinny jean, but um, this is definitely the trend that we're seeing across the board when it comes to sales. So yeah, this is just a Levi's dad jean. Nothing really, nothing else to really say about that. Okay, these, this is a fun sale. This is a pair of shoes that I was going to keep for myself. They're a Dansko black leather studded heeled clog. I wanted to keep it for, you know, going into the fall season. And then I wore them a couple of times to work and decided and not for me. Um, so that's what they looked like. They were in pretty good condition. I mean, I fixed them up with some mink oil, but other than that, they were they were really good. So for $40, not a bad Dansko sale. I feel like Dansko usually runs in that $35 to $55 range. So I was happy with that about that. Um, if you go to Anthropology's website right now, everyone should be doing their homework and going to all these retail stores, websites. Go to Anthropology, go to Revolve go to Madewell, go to any free people, go to any of them. Okay. And look in, and look at the models and see what they're wearing on their feet. And besides boots, which we know is what people are going to be wearing, they're wearing clogs, especially on Anthropology's website. All the models have clogs on, whether it's open back, closed back, they all have studs and they'll have um, a leather or suede clog on. So definitely pay attention to that. If you see something similar to this, pick it up because people are looking for it. This piece was disappointing. Um, this was a retail arbitrage pickup in Nordstrom Rack. I probably, this was a lesson learned on my part. This is John Nee leopard print asymmetrical denim wrap skirt. I loved it. I thought it was pretty. Sat for a year, paid way too much money for it. You can tell she has Doc Martens on. It's cute. Um, I paid $40 for this. I paid way too much, but it was like, I was so thrilled to find the brand. Um, I didn't care, I guess. And it was more of like an experiment for me. You know, it was a expensive experiment, but it was an experiment nonetheless. Um, and it sold for $85. So yeah, I, I made money, but it 
I would not spend that much money on this brand again. Um, but yeah, it's a cute piece. Doesn't surprise me that it sold in the fall. It's leopard print. Looks cute with boots, as you can see on the model. So that was my lesson with this brand and sale. But you live and you learn. Last piece, also surprising sale for me. This was retail arbitrage. I paid $5 for this piece. This was a sundry tie-dye sweatshirt in navy. It sold within 20 minutes of me listing it. Um, it's nothing special. It is just a tie-dye type shirt, dip dye. I don't know what you would call this. I, it was labeled tie-dye on the website. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if Sundry is having a moment. I feel like it is. I feel like the couple pieces that I've listed have all sold between the $35 to $45 range. So yeah, I, I, maybe if you find it, pick it up. I don't know. If you know anything about like a Sundry movement that's happening that I just don't know about, leave that down below as well because I would, I would love to know. <laughs> I would love to know what's going on. Um, all right, so that's it. Those are all of my sales. I hope this was helpful for you to kind of go through the top 20 sales that happened in August. Um, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see a September one for me, let me know in the comments down below and I will be sure to film that as well. Uh, yeah, I'll be back next time with my real real video for August, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll do a thrift haul. I don't know, but one of the two are coming your way really soon. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.